Hello, welcome back to one of my tutorials. Today I'm going to be doing another Lightroom 4 tutorial about uh, reducing contrast in a picture. I've been asked by someone today how I've achieved a certain look in one of my images that I've posted recently on Instagram. If you want to see that image as well as a lot of others of mine, please go onto Instagram and my username is at spb underscore photography. There's also my website, which is burnphotography.co.uk. Okay, that's enough of selling myself. Let's get on with the tutorial. All right, open Lightroom 4. Here is the image that I'm going to be showing you. This was the before, using my Canon 550D. And this was after editing in Lightroom 4. Now I'm going to go back to the beginning of the war image. Um, when I finally finish the image, it might not look exactly like this, but it'll look pretty much similar to it. And I'll show you how I've achieved to get the grass popping as good as it does down the bottom here and standing out a lot more. So let's go to the beginning. Scroll all the way down the history to the import. Okay, here's the image that it was imported off my camera. So I'm going to go straight to sizing it. I'm going to go to a one by one size um, square format, which is ideal for Instagram. It also does look good when framed and mounted. That looks good there. Composition looks okay. Sun's in the middle. And I've got equal spacing around the tree, which gives it a better visual look from someone looking at it. Okay, I'm going to up the exposure a little bit, just like that. Uh, down the contrast slightly. This this is doing the whole of the image, uh, but now I'm going to start just concentrating on the bottom part, which is the grass. So I'm going to use uh, not that. I'm going to use the filter, the graduated filter, and I'm going to drag from the bottom all the way up. I'm just going to use a hard grad on this. Get it about there. Um, and now this little section up here is just for this ground because I've gone from the bottom up it's going to do everything within the within the middle of this line downwards and this control is going to control this area if I went from the top down it's going to be doing the top half I'll do the top half in a minute to add some more color into that sky okay so I'm going to up the exposure So a bit like that. The grass is green here, so I'm going to add a little bit of green filter to it just to make the grass stand out slightly bit more. I'm going to bring down the contrast, up some highlights, up a little bit of a shadow, clarity a little bit more just to add just fine detail more of the grass. It will sharpen out a little bit more. Some saturation. And some sharpness. And I think we've got about that. Yes. I mean, if once I've done the whole picture, I can always go back and change it if I want to. Okay, so I'm going to do the sky now. So I'm now still selected. So I'm going to just drag and drop, which is going to then form another graduated filter. There you go. I'm going to make sure it's levelish. And what I want to come down to is about the same, about the middle of this dot before. Okay, like that. So I want the sun to look more yellow, the sky. So I'm going to go, I mean, you can go blue with it. Um, but I'm going to go yellow. And bring down the exposure a little bit. Just play around the contrast. Highlights because it was morning, even though this is looking more sunsetish, but it was morning and early morning. Bring down the highlight slightly, up the clarity, which will then make the tree leaves a little bit more, it'll stand out a little bit more. Up the contrast on that, a little bit sharpness. I'm not going to need any noise, I don't think. No, it looks all good. Uh, right, I'm going to try the shadows, up the shadow, which is going to 
all this back bit's going to highlight a little bit. You, mean you can, oh, that's the clarity. You can go down the shadow, which will darken it all, but I want them to stand out more. A bit like that. Yeah, let's have a look at that. It's looking okay. Uh, I'm going to add, now I'm going to add, put a, uh, a yellow tint over the whole of the image, just slightly. Yep, bit like that. And now let's play around again with the whole of the image. Bring down the highlights slightly more. So look at the shadows up there a little bit. Whites, bring them down. Blacks. I mean the more you go up there, you're just gonna lose it. So you don't want too much black because you wanna you want the contrast to stay in the glass, give it some depth of field as well. Uh, yep, like that. Slight bit of clarity, some vibrance, a bit more saturation to add some more colour to it all. There might be a slight too much saturation there, but I can change the yellow. I mean, I like this bit, but I can change the yellow later on down in these sliders at the bottom. All right, let's play around with the highlights. Up green. I'm going to up the luminance of the green as well. If I up it all the way, you're going to see slight difference changes, but I'm going to up the luminance a bit so the, the green that he's showing there will just be a lot more brighter. Um, I'm going to go to sharpening, I'm going to sharpen it up to about 70, which again makes it all stand out. I mean, if I use this, go to the grass. You can see in this little box, see how blurred it's gone there. And I'm going to sharpen it. I to go up to about 70. Uh, detail as well, add some detail to it. Which is going to again make all this area just stand out more, give it more of a 3D image effect. I mean, and it's got some depth to it. Up a little bit of noise, because there is noise now in this. But um, for Instagram's sake, you're not going to see much to that. Because I've been messing around with the colours using up in the colours, some colours will be uh, mixing in with each other. This just blurs them out to make it more one colour. So you might not see it too much here. No, you're lucky you don't see it too much on this one. Um, remove the chromatic aberration, which you get a lot more when you're doing long exposures. So you won't see it here, but I always check it anyway. Uh, let's see if I've put a vignette on it. Gives just a more of a glow around the side of the, the vignette. And then I'm just going to go back to the top again. Maybe up a bit more exposure. Uh, yeah, like that. And... One of the, I think one of these, one of this from this image that I like a lot. I like this shadow of the tree, uh, but because I've upped all of the shadows and this area and the contrast, a load of contrast in it, I'm losing this shadow a lot more. So I want it just to come back a little bit more. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use this tool up here, the adjustment brush, and I'm going to just, I'm going to tick this, which is everything that I paint with this adjustment brush will come up red. So I'm going to click it there, and there you see adjustment brush that so everything I'm doing there I've got a bit of a, a feather on it just doing this as quickly okay so I'm gonna uncheck that that red will disappear and now I'm just gonna up the contrast a little bit from there, take down, but you see what I've just painted.
Yeah, I think that's now standing out a lot more than what it was. I mean, we can go back to that. See there, how it's disappeared, and then if I go back to where I am, it's just how that comes back in again. Yep, liking that a lot. Okay, and that is about it. Let's have a look to see. Yep, I think that now it, I've had a look to see if there's any, I mean, the bird is there. It's not doing any purpose there. So what I'm gonna do, Show you quickly how to use the. Uh, I've got the word of it. Let's have a look what it's called. Oh, the spot removal tool. I do it so many times and still forget the word. Okay, there's the bird. Now you see it. Click on it. Move to an area. Say over here. Let go. And the heel will blend in all the colours around to make it. Um, so you, you just won't know. Blending all the colours together. If I did clone whatever is in this circle that I'll do second it will then copy whatever's in that circle but with heel it will mix it all in to give it the best possible match of the same color okay so done that sorry bird zoom back out and there we, there we go that's what, that's what we have it let's go back to the before and after there's the before there's the after all by using Lightroom 4 it's imperative that everyone shoots in a raw format because when you're using software like this, you need you need it to be raw, so um, you can do more editing to it, a lot more editing to it. Thanks very much for listening. I hope this was informative again. Please like and subscribe if you like what you're seeing. Leave some comments, um, and hopefully in my next tutorial, I might do a black and white one to show you how I've achieved some of my black and whites. Okay, thanks very much everybody, take care and hope to hear and see from you soon. Ta-da.